Hi, I am Rajalakshmi, working as an assistant professor in the department of EZE at R&D College of Engineering and Technology. This video deals with design methodologies. Design methodologies refers to the development of a system or process for creating a system or designing process for embedded computing systems. Design process is important when people work together for designing complex embedded systems. People need to agree on who will do things and how they will get done. It also explicit the process to the members of the team. The obvious goal of the design is to create a product that does something useful. The typical specifications for a product include functionality, manufacturing cost, and power consumption. A design process has several important goals beyond function, performance, and power. The first thing is time to market. This, the product that comes first can win the market. Designers should find the exact time to release their product in the market. Any product released late will never make money. So for example, you take the release of the product, for example, uh, school bags, your calculators, school shoes. So these products should be released during the beginning of every academic year, that is uh, during the month of May. So a, a every academic year will start by the month of June. So this, is the, this will be the right exact time for that particular product to be released into the market. That is what we call as time to market. The exact time which is suitable for the particular product to get released into the market so that the product will reach the top place in the market. Coming to the design cost, the last one is the quality of the product that is going to be released. So design flow is the sequence of steps to be followed in a design. There are five models available under design flow. The first one is the waterfall method which is proposed for the software development process. This model consists of five major phases, requirement, architecture, coding, testing, and maintenance. The second method is a spiral model. The next method is successive refinement, followed by we have hierarchical design flows, and the last one we have is concurrent engineering. So coming to the waterfall method, so this is the first model proposed for the software development process. This model consists of five major phases, requirements, architecture, coding, testing, and maintenance. The, the requirement determines the basic characteristics. Architecture decomposes the functionality into major components. Coding implements the pieces and integrates them. Testing uncovers bugs and Maintenance fixes bugs and upgrades the system. The waterfall method gets its name because one way flow of work and information from higher levels of abstraction to more detailed design steps. From the image also you can see waterfalls from higher level to lower level. That is the reason why this particular method has, been, has given the name waterfall model. The next model is the spiral model, which is an alternative model for software development. In waterfall model, the system is built only once, whereas in spiral model, several versions of the system will be built. The, the spiral model is more realistic than the waterfall model because multiple iterations which add enough detail to complete a design. Spiral model have too many spirals which may take too long when the design time is a major requirement. This is the disadvantage of spiral model. The third model is successive model in which the system is built several times. The first system is used as a rough prototype and the successive models of the system are further refined. 
coming to the hardware and software design, the front end activities such as specification and architecture simultaneously consider hardware and software aspects. Similarly, back end integration and testing consider the entire system. The development of hardware and software will go independently in the middle. Hierarchical design flow. Hierarchical design flow is used in complex embedded systems which are built of several smaller designs. In large projects, each flow will be handled by separate people or team. So from the diagram, you can able to see in large pro projects, each flow will be handled by separate people or team, where the teams must rely on each other's result. The component teams take their requirements from the team handling the next higher level of abstraction. Concurrent engineering. Concurrent engineering will be used when designing a large system along with many people. Concurrent engineering makes each designer to take a narrow view of his or her role in the design flow. Reduced design time is the important goal of concurrent engineering. The concurrent engineering comprised of the following elements which are cross-functional teams which includes members from the various disciplines involved in the process including manufacturing, hardware and software design. Concurrent product realization is the heart of concurrent engineering which includes doing several things at once. Incremental information sharing, which means as soon as a new information is available, it is shared and integrated into the design. Integrated product management. It ensures that someone is responsible for the entire project. Early and continual supplier involvement makes the best use of suppliers. Early and continual customer focus helps to ensure that the product meets the customer needs. So that's all about the design methodologies.